That row's gone. Once the next row comes in here, I'll only have one in the yard. So Paul's just off to get the second herd, which is just down there in at number six. But good morning everyone, how are you all doing? So I am milking all the cows today because Dad is at the beach for a week. He's there until Friday. Today is, well, what is today? Wednesday. So I've got three more milkings and then I head away for a week. So we swap over. But it's not the nicest day. There's just a bit of rain that's just come through. And I think it's supposed to get quite heavy later on, which isn't good because it's actually the start of the national field days at Mystery Creek, which are just over there, like not very far, literally like 15 minutes away. But that goes for four days and that's the biggest agricultural show in the southern hemisphere. I think they expect to get like 100,000 people through there in four days. So I can't make it, I'm a little bit busy unfortunately, but hopefully next year when it goes back to June, which is its normal time, I'll be able to go. But there's more rain coming down now. So here's the next herd here, just need to move this breast rail out though because these cows are a little bit bigger and they need a little bit more room. Come on out you go, come on, up, 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 heaps of room out there. So they slot straight in behind this herd so it's a pretty easy changeover. And that's why we have the pen out front there so all the young herd they can go into there while this other herd comes in the back here because we only have one sort of entry into the shed and one exit so Paul shut these girls in now he's letting these ones go easy as just like that it's a little bit unconventional but it works for us and it's how we got away with milking more cows through a really small shed because we can't fit all the cows in one herd together but there goes the first row so it's time to change the bulls over Go on matey, you know the drill. Come on. And I might see if I can get this fellow out. I really don't like this bull. I don't trust them whatsoever. Well, you don't trust any bulls, but this one's, he's a little bit, I don't know, there's something about him. Come on matey. Come on, you know what to do. Nah, I'm gonna have to wait. Come on. Come on, get up. Oh, there we go. Come on. You really are a dork. They've all been really good this year. The last couple of years I've had some shockers where they sort of hold the cows up in the paddock or down one corner. Or when you bring them out onto the race, the bulls charge up the front and they hold them up. So they, it takes ages in the morning. You've almost got to push the whole, the, or the bull the whole way up to the shed here. But generally, these have been pretty good. Or well, the other three are really good. It's just this fella here. He's a little bit dodgy. He sort of likes to stand his ground a little bit more. So you've got to be pretty, pretty cautious. But he's not too bad overall. But they've only got, what, another 10 days left with the girls. So they better make the most of it. I actually need to ring Marty today and book them in to go to the works. Although it's a bit of a quiet day at the office for them today, there's only one cow on and that was in the first herd, there's none on in here, which is good. It has slowed right down, there was only two on yesterday and none the day before that. So we are sort of coming to the end of week, I think it's week seven or is it week eight of mating. So the less cows come on the better, although we do want them to come on if they haven't come on yet. So bit of a catch 22 but low numbers is good at this stage and here's actually quite a good example so this cow here number 327 she's a young cow three year old real nice udder on her look at that beautiful but she hasn't come on heat yet but she did carve like mid September so generally if they carve at the later end they will cycle later into mating but it's not always the case I think the last cow that carved actually came on and that was like right at the end of September. That came on in like the first three weeks of mating, so that's pretty good. And that's actually her mum there, number 322. So she is three-quarter Frisian, so I guess you could say she's a crossbred. The only one in the herd, 
I thought she had a bit more jersey in her, but I just looked it up and apparently not. Though she does milk pretty well, although she is a lot bigger cow than, than these jerseys. Oh, that rain's really starting to come in now. Just what we need. One more milking down, so only two more to go to them at the beach. But because the weather's a little bit dodgy at the moment and it is supposed to get like heavy showers throughout the day, is I've just put the diverter on, which is just down there. So instead of all the rainwater that hits the shed and the concrete here, going into the effluent sump down there, it takes it down the hill there to an old effluent pond. And because it's only fresh water or rainwater, that's fine. And because it's so wet at the moment, we don't want to be collecting that water and irrigating it out at the moment because the ground's sort of saturated. You do get a little bit of runoff. However, once we do get into the sort of dry months in summer like January, we will start collecting the rainwater and irrigating it back out onto the paddocks. In the scheme of things though, it's probably really not going to do that much, but better to be efficient with it instead of letting it run down the drain. But on a good note, check this out. So this is the weather for the next sort of 10 days and it's looking pretty good. There's a lot of sun there, which is what I really want to see because these silage paddocks down here are getting really rank and I mean, everything is just going to sort of seed head which means the quality has dropped but it looks sort of more like a hay paddock now which i guess i couldn't have done much about because the weather hasn't really played ball but everyone's in the same situation so hopefully i'll be able to mow it next tuesday or this coming tuesday which is about a week away and uh and get it baled then but there is a little bit of a weight on the baler everyone wants to get their silage off first and it just depends where you were on the list so yeah, hopefully I can cut Tuesday and, and get it bailed Wednesday. It'd be good to get this off and then I can sort of get my paddocks back. But if it does keep raining, hopefully we will be able to lock some more up and get a little bit more surplus too. There's like blue sky up before, so I thought the rain might have been over for the day, but there's even a bit of thunder around now, so apparently not. And now the sun is out again. Weather can't make up its mind, but at least it's warm when it does come out. I guess tomorrow is the first day of summer though. But I'm just about to shift some cows, so I'm going to start setting up for tomorrow. Just fill the hot water cylinder up. Looks like it's absolutely pouring down over there, so hopefully it doesn't come this way, because I'm living life a little bit on the edge. Didn't put any leggings on. At least it's looking good while I'm on holiday, though. I did want to top this paddock in front of these girls, too, but it was just pouring with rain, so didn't quite get there. It's no big deal really because they're going in there tomorrow so what I'll do is just wind up the fence and just top the whole lot so they'll get it topped in front of them tomorrow and then there's just one break at the end to do. Dad can do that when he comes back. But that'll pretty much do it for this video guys so like always thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.